Why would you accept that? I had no choice. I was barely a child when the decision was made, and when I learned of it, I had accepted it. Why, though? How would you know if you'd be in love with the guy you married? It didn't matter. My kingdom would be safe, and I would be able to live with knowing I was able to protect my kingdom. I stared at Diana as she smiled at me with sad eyes. She really didn't want to marry them. It was practically pained, painted all over her face. You shouldn't marry someone you don't love. Diana's face shifted from one to surprise to, as she looked at me. I was being honest, though. She shouldn't have to marry someone to protect a kingdom. It would be safe, yes, but you would be unhappy. Can you live with yourself knowing that? I'd rather be unhappy than see my kingdom burn to the ground. Besides, as the bride of the next demon lord, I'd have the ability to change things. I could disband his armies, bring peace to the abyssal plains. But what about love? Love. Diana looked at her lap and sighed. Love can't exist for me. I'm the most powerful succubus in the demon world. Anyone who would go after me would only be entranced by my power. I'm not. Diana chuckled, making me blush a bit. I was being honest, and here she was laughing at my words. You're a human, dear. You can't know when I'm using my powers or not. I could be using them now, making you interested in me to trust me. But you're not, are you? Diana then silenced herself. She stared at me, knowing that her silence would give me my answer. I smirked at her. You like me. <laughs> what? You like me. You definitely like me. I do not. I'm merely fulfilling my end of the deal. I felt like a tease. She was being nice to me, and I was, wasn't was using her powers over here because she liked me. It was too obvious. You like me. You like me. You like me. What I didn't expect was her taking my hand and forcing me closer to her. A mere inch separated our lips, but Diana's stare into my soul made my mind go blank. I barely remembered what I was saying. Diana remained holding me. I didn't fight. She stared into my soul, and I allowed it. I was concerned, and at the same time, I was intrigued. Diana was indeed a beautiful woman. Seeing her up close made my face turn slightly red in embarrassment. Any moment, she could lean in and kiss me. Maybe even take my energy. However, she didn't. You are interesting for a human. Then she released me and stared at me, watching as I stared back at her with a red face. Do I like her? I shook my head. No way. That was impossible. We were just in a business deal. Nothing more. Is there anything else you wanted to know? I stared at her as I thought. Was there anything else I wanted to know? My memories were forfeit in the end. So everything was up for grabs. I couldn't think of a single question. Was that all I wished to know? No, there was nothing else I needed to know. I felt satisfied. No, that should be all. I understand. Diana stood in the just at the bottom of her dress before smiling at me. I barely noticed how much time had passed between us. It felt like forever, yet I enjoyed learning more. I felt bad that I had to lose my memories, however. That was the deal, and according to Diana's, demons never go back on their word. Well, if you don't mind, there's one place I need to visit, and I'd rather visit it now than after I take your memories. I'll be gone from the area for quite a while, anyway. Hmm? Where do you need to go? A cemetery. There's something I need to do there. It's boring, sadly, but I need to do it. You need to come with so I can watch you. Why did she need me to need to go to the cemetery? Did she have a human friend she needed to say goodbye to? Did she have to meet with another demon? Sure, let me... No need to get dressed up. It's just a brief visit. Diana snapped her fingers and the world melted into black. I stood and walked up to... Walked to be beside Diana, unsure of what was happening. Why wasn't the world spinning instead? Was the spinning a trick she did? I felt myself... Click my teeth in irritation at the thought. Soon the world grew black. Grew back. It's... Soon the world grew back its color and we were standing in a field I somehow recognized. I looked down and regretted it. At our feet was our was grandfather's gravestone. It was untouched and as clean as when I last remembered seeing it. Why were we here? Here we are. Here? I stared at Diana as she muttered, a small incantation under her breath in her hands, formed a small vase with the purple lilacs. She ne gently knelt down and placed them beside the grave. I had to pay my respects to this man. Why? Were you a friend of his? I needed to know. My man mind began screaming. Something wasn't right. Why did she know him? How did she know he was dead? 
What was their relationship? What was going on? No, I wasn't a friend of his. I didn't even know him. Why are you giving him flowers? <sighs> my mind began to screech louder in my head. What was it? Why? Why? Diana, why are you giving him flowers? You don't need to know. I highly doubt you knew this man. Uh, yes I do. Diana stared wide-eyed at me, a mixture of fear and surprise mixed in her eyes. Her heart began to squeeze tightly in my chest. Why was she looking at me like that? How do you know him? Answer my question. How? I said answer my question. I couldn't hold my voice. I needed to hear her answer. I didn't want to hear anything else. Anything other than her answer would infuriate me. Diana looked down at the grave, letting out a small sigh. My heart tightened f further. Answer me. I need the answer. This man helped the boys come to the human world. He opened a bridge and let them through, before sealing it with a part of his life force. There was more. I knew there was more. I remained silent as she took a breath. I had come to visit their castle one day, and when they told me that the boys were gone, I became frantic. Without the contract marriage, the demon lord would have had the freedom to march on my kingdom and conquer it. I couldn't let that happen. So I tried to find a way here. I searched the castle during my brief visit, trying to find out where the boys went. I found it. This man left behind a small trace of his spell, small enough to be undetected by the inhabitants of the castle. Diana looked to me, a look of pain on her face that made my already pained heart feel like it was punctured by needles. Demon magic is best with consent, but takes more energy when forced. So, in a blind need, I recast the spell and used that man's life force to open the bridge once more and seal it completely when I walked through. I didn't know I was taking the rest of his life. She... By the time the bridge closed, the man had already passed. He was visiting someone in a nearby hospital, so when I left to find the boys, the staff had found him and tried to revive him. I didn't want to take his life. I thought he was a younger man. I didn't know he was as old as he was. She... It's my fault this man is dead. But I needed to come to the human world, and he was my only chance to get close enough to track the boys down. You... Diana tensed up and stared at me. Her face was painted with regret and sadness, something not like her usual self. You killed my grandfather. Your... your grandfather? I needed to leave. I needed to go. I quickly turned and ran, hearing Diana call out for me from behind. Wait! I ran. I didn't look back. I couldn't look back. She started all of this. She was the one who turned my world upside down. She was the reason for this chaos I was in. She took my grandfather away. I ran through the gates of the cemetery and through the streets to my house. This time, the world was in slow motion, and I was the one going in fast forward. I didn't care what was going on around me, I just needed to run. My heart began to freeze in my chest, pained by the feeling of needles and knives piercing through it. Tears were running down my face, but I knew where I was running. I ran through the front gates of my house and sprinted inside. I zipped up the stairs and ran into my room. As I slammed the door behind me, I began to weep violently. I leaned against the door and slid to the ground crying. My world was crumbling and I didn't like it. My world was broken in park and I didn't want it. All I could do though was cry. My heart denied me from thinking about anything else. I cried. I continued to cry. I let my heart empty. I f let my heart empty of its pain with each tear that ran down my cheeks. I'm not doing that. My scream echoed through my room, bouncing around and reverberating into my ears. I didn't care if it hurt to hear. I didn't care about anything anymore. All I cared about was crying. I curled into a ball and cried. I didn't even know when I passed out. I didn't remember closing my eyes and letting the darkness take me. The darkness was comforting. I felt my sadness numb within it. There was no reality, reality in that darkness to haunt me or hurt me. I wanted to stay within it forever. However, my body forced me to open my eyes. I saw the room focus around me and I realized I was staring at the ceiling. I was in my bed under my covers. I sat up and looked around, stopping to see Diana leaning against the balcony window, looking away from me. Why was she here? Did she carry me to bed? I felt my anger wanting to speak out against Diana, but I noticed the puffiness around her visible eyes. Had she been crying? 
Seeing her bloodshot puffy eye made me fully aware of my own eyes and how dried they had become after crying. I rubbed my eyes and let out a shaky sigh. I'm sorry. I stared at Diana. My heart didn't want to hear it, but I let her speak. I didn't want to come here in the first place. I only thought of bringing the boys back to protect my kingdom, so everything else became secondary. I didn't mean to take his life. But you did. I did. I can't ask for forgiveness, but I still am sorry. If I could turn back time, I would find another way. I... You know, it's because of you that I met the boys. Huh? I looked in, looked to my blanket-covered lap. I remembered the funeral, the moving, the meeting with the boys. Everything came at me at once. Now I had one puzzle piece that fitted all together. If my grandfather hadn't died, he'd still be living here. He'd be the one taking care of the boys instead of me. But he died and gave me this, his estate. So I came and met them for the first time. I looked at Diana, seeing her sad face. I could tell she really regretted her choice and was upset. I couldn't sense any deception in her. I guess I have to thank you for introducing me to them and to magic, since my grandfather couldn't do it himself anyway. Diana looked down, pressing her lips together and closing her eyes. I... I need to take your memories now. A deal's a deal. I fulfilled my part and told you everything. I had nothing left to tell you, and you can't keep those memories. I didn't speak. I watched as Diana argued into the air about taking my memories. It felt like she was now doubting the deal, not wanting to take away the truth from me. Did I want her to? This was my chance to return to ignorance. I'd never remember that she took my grandfather's life. I'd never remember everything she showed and taught me. I'd return to normalcy. Diana stared at me. It was almost a despair in her face. I, however, kept my eyes to her. You took away my grandfather. What gives you the right to take my memories but away? I... I'm not done speaking. Diana shut her mouth, listening obediently. I needed to speak my mind. She had no right to take anything away. I knew the truth now, and that was all that mattered to me. Screw the rules. I deserve to remember everything. I was thrown into the mess, this mess because of you. No one has the right to take anything from me. Diana took a step towards me, and I was ready to snap at her. However, she gently leaned over and ran a hand over my head. All right. What? I won't take your memories. I stared up at her in shock. Was she serious? Diana smiled at me and took a step and stood back up. You're right. You deserve to know everything. It's the least I can do. I felt almost joyful. She agreed with me. This was a huge deal. I didn't forgive Diana, but it was better to know than to be left in ignorance. Eventually, I'd be able to move on. Until then, Diana was willing to stay and teach me the life my grandfather knew in redemption. It was something. Head back to sleep and I'll teach you more in the morning. I'll stay a few more days until you know everything. Something fell off, but I nodded, feeling exhaustion drift over me again. Was it natural? I didn't know. My head began to spin, and I needed more rest. Diana gently laid me back down and moved hair from my face. Rest. As if from a spell, I closed my eyes and fell into an unconscious darkness. <laughs>